Hello and welcome to another budget and legged video. Now we're going to do part two of our parasitic drawer video. We're doing this on an older car. I don't know if I explained it well enough in the first video, but essentially, I think I said it. Um, I'll have to go back and check, but I'm pretty sure I said it that the first one is only for certain cars. It's not for the ultra modern cars and it's not really for, for the older cars. This is all you need for the older cars. You don't need anything special. I thought I would do a couple of videos just because if someone's got an older car and they've got a test light, it means they don't have to go and buy other equipment. There's no point. Now, I'm going to show on the modern cars. I'm just waiting on a, on a new gadget to come just to make it a little bit easier for me. But yeah, it, these are going to be car specific. So this is going to be for the older cars with kind of no modules, no nothing fancy. You can do this. The first video was kind of for the cars in between and the last video is going to be for the new modern cars. To give you an idea, if you was to use the first test I did on the new modern cars, you can come across a lot of problems like I did say in the video. You can lose programming, you can do, you can just, it's, it's, it's messy so don't do it. The other thing is once you take out a fuse on a modern car and put it back in, you'll wake that module up and you will cause more of a drain. So. There's, there's other ways of doing it, but we're going to get into it in this video in just doing kind of the older basic standard cars sorted. Now, what you want to do before you do this test is you need to make sure your battery and your charging system is good because if your battery is bad, it's going to drain for no reason overnight anyway. Um, and if there is a little bit of a drain on it and your battery is kind of not great, it's going to drain quicker. So what we need to do first is that there is we need to find we need to make sure our charging system is good I didn't show this in the first video because I wanted to show it in this video there's no point me showing it in the third video I just wanted to kind of do it in this one there's loads of different ways of testing your battery I have this machine so I'm going to use this machine because it, it's brilliant I can print it out I can show the customer rather than just saying look the battery is, is, is gone I can physically show like a printed receipt and it just it just looks better um, so what we need to do is we need to plug it in. Now this battery is a second hand battery we put in this car and I don't think it's particularly great but we're going to get an idea. So it's asking me what do I want to do? Do I want to do a battery test and we can also do a system test. So we can do a battery test and a system test. We'll just do a battery test first. So it's asking me what type of battery it is. So And then it's also asking me what it is and it is a, a SAE and then it's asking me if the cranking amps which is 700 and it's going to test it it's going to tell me good past I press enter gives me the code hopefully you can see this it's going to print the receipt for me It's telling me the state of charge is good, the state of health is 85%. So it's passed, it's done what it needs to do. So what we're going to do now is, we're going to go back and we're going to do a system test. Turn off loads and start engine. Cranking volts normal, which is good, so I press enter. Make sure all loads are off, all loads are off. Idle volts, it's saying it's a little bit low, but I know. So we're a little bit lower on our idle voltage, it's not a problem at the minute. Turn on loads and press enter, so I'm gonna turn on the loads now. So I've turned on the, uh, the heat and the lights. Press enter. Run engine to up to two and a half thousand for 15 seconds. I'm gonna have to guess this. Test over, turn off load, turn off engine. Press enter. Print results. Yes. Right. So our first one, 
you can see it pass state of charge 85% or state of charge 100% battery health 85% then we come down to the mix mix minimum maximum loads diode ripple is all normal everything is passed so we now know from this test that our charging system and battery is working because that is important like I said I did that on the first one before I did the video but I just wanted to show it on this one when I do the third video I'm not going to show it but I'm going to make sure I do that before it because there's no point me showing things over and over again in these videos um, so yes that's it so now we know we can go and actually test this battery for a drain. The reason why this is important is because, like I said, if your battery isn't great or you're, it's not charging, when you're driving down the road and you turn your heater on, you turn your lights on, you turn your radio on, well, that could be drawing the, the battery down because the charging system can't keep up with it. The car might still run, but it'll be, it'll be discharging the battery. And when you come to try and start the next morning, there's just not enough power in the battery. So you think, well, hold on everything works it's okay so I must have a draw well not necessarily so that's why it's important to make sure your charging system and your battery works once you've done that what we can do is same thing again we'll take off the negative now this way it's just really simple I put on now what we're actually getting here is I don't know if you can see that and you can hear that that's our alarm we've got an aftermarket alarm on this which is ridiculously stupid it's it's annoying but that welcome to the 80s hey and as I connect it I'm energizing just for a second I'm in it you know, let's do it again. I'm energizing the um, aftermarket alarm so these are the sort of things you have to bear in mind but I know that's just the aftermarket alarm. I am gonna rip it out of this car because it's pointless having it in, there's just no point. This is the alarm trying to energize now, but it just hasn't got enough power to energize. Um, right, this might cause me a problem. Might have to try and disconnect it. Because as I connect this, you'll hear it beep. I'll say you will. There we go. It's gonna go off now in a second if I don't take this off. Right, what I'm gonna have to do is, because that's gonna kind of mess up my test, I'm gonna to have to see if I can just disconnect this just for a minute, just so I can see, um, just so I can do this test. If not, I do have a way around it. Now, unfortunately, it's an aftermarket alarm that is kind of a professional aftermarket alarm and it's wired into everything. If I disconnect the fuse, I disconnect too many things. The car won't start, it won't do anything. So I'm gonna, that's gonna to have to maybe be a future video ripping all that out, I don't know. But we'll just have to crack on without it at the minute. It's going to be flashing, but it's not, um, it's not going to cause us a problem. Right, as long as I hold this on the initial... It's not doing it now yet. The initial thing, it kind of... Right, now it's kind of happy. The alarm is kind of happy. As you can see, we have no light on at all. That's kind of what you want to see on the old cars. Now depending what you have in the dash if you've got like a digital or an analog clock that's ticking um you know that will be drawing a little bit of power so you'll be expecting to maybe see kind of um you know a, a slight glow but obviously that's not a problem what you don't want to be seeing is that you know this glowing really bright so what i'm going to do is i'm going to turn something on maybe the lights or something on like I did before, just so you can see the draw of this. Right, so what I've done is I've just turned the lights on. And when I connect this back up, you can see this constantly stays on. It's not, it's not doing anything, it's just constantly staying on. So that means we do have a big, big draw. So you know if that's left for too long like this, your battery is gonna go flat. So how do we find it? Well, it's the same way as the last video. We have to go to our fuses, in this car we can do it because it's the older car it's not going to cause us a problem um, in the newer cars like i have explained this will cause you a problem but we'll do a video on that so what we're going to do is we're going to try and set this up somehow where i can keep this light on i don't know if i can now hopefully that will stay stay try and get both them in at the same time so hopefully you can see the light on and you can see the fuse box now we have really old-fashioned fuses in this but anyway so what we need to do is you pull out each fuse, you know, one at a time until 
the light goes off. Farkin lights tail lights number eight. But we know that it's going to be this one. I say it's going to be this one. Oh, that's not number eight then. No, that's number eight, that's why. It's number 12. This one. It's the alarm. There we go. So, I've pulled out number eight fuse. That's the alarm going now. So I've just shut the alarm up just by kind of resetting it. Normally you wouldn't have that problem. It doesn't have the power. Right, I'm just gonna disconnect that. It doesn't have the power to run the alarm properly. But you get the idea. So what happens is that light, once I took out the fuse, the light went off. You then find out what fuse it was, and all this does is the parking, the parking tail lights. That's what this fuse does. So you now know that you have a problem with the light side of things. Whether you've left lights on or you have to find a short to ground or something like that, at least you know kind of where to go from here. This problem is gonna be your hardest problem, trying to figure out exactly what's gone wrong. That is always going to be the hardest problem. To actually figure out if you've got a draw, very, very simple as you can see. To fix that draw, potentially an absolute nightmare. Um, so I'm just gonna shove this fuse back in. It's disconnected so it doesn't make a difference. So yes, that's how you do it on an older car. You've got no you know, real computers or anything to worry about, no code keys to worry about, no anything really to worry about. So you know, you really are quite safe. So as regards on this, don't worry about that light flashing. This isn't constantly putting a big draw on the battery, that alarm. The alarm system was trying to arm itself. Because it wasn't getting enough power, it was trying and trying and trying and it kept trying to arm itself. And then when it did kind of try and sort itself out, you heard the noise it made, it wasn't like it should be at all. Because it couldn't get enough power through the test light to actually do what it needed to do. So this isn't a big draw on the system. The alarm will be causing some sort of a draw on the system. It will be certainly. So on a car like this that you maybe don't use every day, it's a good thing, you know, once every couple of days just to start it, keep everything kind of working and charging because when you do come to use it, the battery's gonna be flat. And like I said, if you let the battery go too flat, you'll destroy it. Whether, whether it's brand new, it doesn't matter. It'll never work properly. Yeah, that's, that's what the kind of the, the, the flashing was all about, but don't, you have to be aware of these things because like I said in the other video, if you start wiring things into your car and depending on what they are and how you wire them, they could be taking a draw from the battery. So if you happen to wire loads of new fancy gadgets in your car and you're thinking, after a week my battery's flat, I must have a problem. You necessarily don't have a problem in the sense of it's just all the stuff you've wired into your car is causing you a problem. But if you start it every day, you're not gonna have an issue. Like I haven't started this in a few days and it fired up straight away, no problem. So I know it's not a big huge draw that the um, alarm system is actually doing. So that's it. See, I should have maybe made it a bit more clear because in my head I knew what I was doing with the first video, but obviously you guys didn't. Um, so I should have maybe made it a bit clearer. It is important before you're doing this test on any car, make sure your battery and your charging system is good. That's the first thing you need to do before you do anything because if your charging system or your battery isn't good, there's no point trying to do a draw test. You still might have a draw, but you're gonna have to fix your battery or your charging system first before you can actually fix that. If you've got a draw and if you've had a draw for a long time, it will knacker your battery. So you need to kind of do that first. On these old cars, you can just use a very, very simple test light. We had a problem with the alarm system. Now, well, you know, but that was just this car. Normally they don't have um, kind of these alarm systems in. This, to be fair, even though it is an aftermarket alarm, it's a really good one. It's tied into everything. So it wasn't just a five second job to kind of disconnect it. But you get the idea. That's how you find a draw on the older car. The next video is going to be how to find the parasitic draw on the kind of modern cars. That it's going to be completely different to this. We're not going to be pulling fuses because pulling fuses on a modern car 
is going to cause, well, potentially loss of codes. The car might not start afterwards. You know, you could end up costing yourself a fortune. So don't do this on a modern car. Like I said in the other video, don't do it. We'll show you how to do it on a, on a modern car. Uh, we're going to be using different equipment, but I just wanted to show kind of the three different car groups because I think, you know, if you've got an older car, you don't need to go out spending more money. If you've got a test light, you've got a test light, really simple. So that's it. But yeah, look, hope it helps. Thumbs up, subscribe and all that. And most importantly, don't forget, get your hands dirty. See you for the next one.